In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can create these super cool alcohol ink and resin candle holders. They're great as gifts and even better for Christmas. So stick around, that's coming up next. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Art with Jay Monteith. Today I'm super excited uh, to share with you guys this fun project of alcohol ink and resin wrapped candle holders. These are great little gifts and they're fun uh, to make and put on your dining room table. And I'm gonna be sharing with you all of the things that you need today in order to create these. So first and uh, foremost, you'll be needing your glasses, uh, just a short, straight uh, set of glasses that you can fit your tea lights in. And I'm just gonna be using the battery operated ones, just easier to use than the uh, traditional flame ones. Then you'll also be needing a tape measure. You'll be needing a ruler with a metal edge for to cut a nice straight edge with your X-Acto knife. I'm just using my brand new Fiskars uh, Comfort Tip knife. This one's really, really nice. Or you can use a, um, a really good uh, sharp pair of scissors. Uh, you'll need a self-healing board to cut your resin uh, on, and you'll also be needing, of course, your inks, whatever you choose. Again, I'll be using Jacquard because they are my favorite. Then you'll be needing wax paper. Uh, this is important uh, because we'll be pouring the resin on top of this, so you'll be needing that. And then finally, uh, you'll be needing um, a mixing container so that you can mix your resin, uh, and we'll be going ahead and starting the project right now. So let's clear this off and move on to the first step. Okay, so you first want to grab a piece of wax paper and just, you know, fair, a t tear a fairly long piece so that you have room to spread your resin on. And I'm just going to flip that over this side for a moment. And then what you'll want to do is just mark out some areas so you know how much resin to spread across your uh, wax paper. And so I actually like to measure the distance and the width of my glasses. So all you do is you just take your tape measure and you measure the circumference uh, of your glass. So in this case it is 7 inches and then I'm going to measure down to you know this part right here. Uh, and that is actually no, I'm going to measure all the way down. I think so three and a half. So seven by three and a half uh, is the, essentially the coverage or the area that we want for our resin. So all I'm going to do here, so I know how much resin to spread, is I'm just going to mark across. So seven by three and a half, uh, which is here. And I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, that was a really bad line that I just drew there. Was it was not even square. But uh, anyway, it's just more of a guide so you know um, where to sort of keep the resin. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish marking all of these out because I have three glasses that I'm going to be doing. And then I'm going to flip over the page and we can start uh, spreading some resin. Okay, so essentially all I've done is gone ahead and marked out my three and a half by seven. I've done it three times uh, because I have a couple of glasses to do. And I've just turned over the page so the uh, ink part is just sitting uh, on the underside. And I think we're ready to go to mix up some resin and pick out our colors. So the colors that I'm going to be using today, I'm going to be using some of the uh, Sun Bright Yellow. And again, this is from Jacquard. I'm going to be, I'm going to be trying some metallic gold in here today. Uh, and of course my usual favorites, the um, Baja Blue and the Senorita Magenta. So I'm gonna be doing some greens and I'm gonna be doing some pinks and golds and some pink and yellow and that sort of thing. And just remember that when you mix your resin, when you're pouring it, even with this application, you wanna make sure that your surface is level because uh, we're going to be wrapping around our resin onto our glasses at um, a later time. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my resin and we'll start with the next step. All right, I have finished mixing my resin, and of course this is art resin, it's the best resin to use. I've mixed this for three minutes, and it's half of the hardener and half of the resin. It's always a 50-50 ratio, and mixed for at least three minutes. So that's done, and I'm just gonna set that there for a moment. And I've actually put my um, piece of wax paper, or parchment paper, whatever you wanna use, uh, onto just an old canvas. I use that as a tray so that if it does spread and or I want to lift it up and move it around then I, I can do that so it's perfect. So I've got all of my little squares ready to go 
and I have a few extra cups in case I want to mix some resin and tint that and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just start pouring some into um, and spreading it out over the areas all right so spread some kind of like in almost the shape of the square and do some here and this one and some here Okay, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just more of an eyeball so we know um, where the resin is going to settle. Um, and we can spread it out a little bit, but you don't really even need to do that because we are going to be trimming it. Uh, that's why we have the square there. So I'm just going to just make sure that you've just got a little bit over the edge and just a little bit more on this one. And then we can start adding some color to this. All right, so I think I probably got enough there. And we'll just spread this one here. And then we can start putting on our color. I think that looks pretty good. It'll probably spread a little bit more as resin usually does. Okay. All right, I'm gonna start off with some Senorita Magenta, which again is, as you know from watching my videos, I always say how much I love this color. So of course I will be using that. And I'm just gonna put a few little drops there and then I'm gonna put some yellow as well, I think on this one because it's kind of pretty just mixed in there and the one thing you want to remember too is that if you're going to be spreading this one color on one end then try and be consistent on the other end because if eventually you're going to be wrapping this around uh, your uh, container or your glass and you want it to kind of match a little bit so I just want to make sure that it's somewhat even on both sides. Okay, and then here I think I'm going to do some blue and I'm going to add some yellow also to this one so it will turn a bit green because I really like the green. All right. You just start playing around with the color and you can get all kinds of squirrely effects which is kind of pretty so you just kind of play around with the colors and then they mix really nicely so I'm just using obviously just a regular toothpick here these are pretty colors I'm liking the way that's going there so I think I'm gonna put some more pink here and a little bit more yellow Okay, I'm going to continue on playing around as I normally do and then I'm going to come back when I've got them how I like them and uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I have finished mixing my colors and I'm going to leave these now and it's okay that it went over a little bit because as I said, we're going to be just using those as a guideline and then we'll peel off the wax paper or peel the resin off of the wax paper tomorrow when it's dry, but it will still be pliable and flexible. It won't have completely hardened at that point. So you just have to make sure that you move the tray and cover it over uh, so that there, you know, it's dust free and um, you can then remove that lid in the morning. So I'm going to leave these and we'll come back tomorrow and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, it is the next day. I have allowed this to dry overnight and, and now I can begin to uh, take my resin off of my parchment or wax paper. So I'm just going to peel this off of my board here and just move this onto another surface. And I think I'll just cut down here this one first. 
So again, it's like I said, it's nice and flexible and you can work with it fairly easily at this point still. And I'm just going to continue cutting all of these until I've got all of my pieces cut out. All right, so all of my pieces have now been cut out and now we want to ensure that we've got the right dimensions to wrap around our uh, five ounce glasses. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, put a um, cutting board, self-healing cutting board here. I have lots of these, so this is a smaller one. And I, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I measured um, the dimensions uh, around the glass and it was basically three and a half by seven. So what you do is you just flip over the back and then you can see exactly where you had outlined originally with pen those dimensions. And all I want to do now is just uh, double check lined up that I actually have three and a half by seven. And then we're going to go ahead and either use um, our X-Acto knife or we can actually cut out as well um, with scissors. So I just want to make sure that I, I've done these correctly. And I'm going to just see here, three and a half by seven. So I'll go ahead and actually cut these out. I think I was off a little bit on one, uh, but they're all fairly close. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually start cutting these out. Okay, like I said, you can either use scissors or you can use an X-Acto knife. I'm actually using this one um, because you get a nice clean edge with that. So I've literally uh, just lined up uh, to my board here and I'm just going to cut. Make sure you just have a ruler that's got a metal edge and it's nice and straight. And just take your time with this step, just kind of score it the first uh, run through, and then probably take you two or three um, uh, cuts to go through the entire uh, layer of resin here. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, so I have finished cutting this one out and I have peeled off the backing. Now, sometimes you do get pieces sticking on there, so you actually have to have a little bit of patience and just, you know, take your time in pulling off the backing of your parchment paper. Okay, I'm just on my final piece that I'm going to cut out here and just measure, so I'm going to flip that over. A, t a tip as well, if you're having a hard time getting off the uh, parchment paper on the back, because there sometimes are little pieces, then I would recommend that you just get like a sponge, a wet one, and just rub it over. You can even um, run this under some warm water and just uh, work off the excess uh, a parchment there as well. So there are some extra steps that you can take in order to uh, remove that. All right, I am ready to attach my resin pieces to my candle holders. Now, I just wanted to explain a few things. I actually did a couple of batches um, and uh, the reasons that I did a second one is because when I measured my first batch of resin, I actually measured, um, even though the dimensions were correct, I needed to uh, overextend my measurement by about an inch because you just want a little bit of extra coverage so that you can then trim off the excess. Otherwise, if it's too short, then you don't get a proper seam. So uh, that is an important tip. Whatever your dimensions are, add on an extra inch so that you have that extra um, amount of resin that you can work with. Light also just so that I know that it's going to fit uh, perfectly and all you need to do essentially is uh, we're going to wrap these around and then the overage we're just going to trim off. Now you can use as I mentioned the Krylon Easy Tack. If you want to you can of course use um, a glue gun that's perfectly fine just remember that it leaves more um, of a build up on your glass so you won't get a flush finish and you obviously you have less time to work with a hot glue gun it, it dries really really quickly so uh, that is the other suggestion uh, for the reason why I would be using the easy tack and then lastly uh, as I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the video you want to ensure that you have sort of like a consistency between one end to the other because when you do join up you'll get 
uh, you know, you won't get a, a good flow necessarily. So here I actually uh, didn't run the theme properly all the way to the end. Now it's still going to be pretty, don't get me wrong, um, but just be aware of that if you want more of a consistent theme. So, all right, so I'm just going to spray my glass here with one side with the Krylon. And I'm just going to put just that down there because I don't want it to spray everywhere. Okay, so just one side there and then the same with your resin. And you just want to kind of let it sit there for, you know, like 30, 40 seconds. You want to let it, the air get to it so it's just a little bit tacky and then um, it's easier to adhere. So it's best if you spray both surfaces so when they join together you get a good bond. And I'm just gonna think this is almost ready to go here. And let's do this side. So I think what I'm gonna do is start here. And so I'm gonna tr trim the bottom edge. Now the other important thing to remember is when you're buying these glasses, uh, you want to try and ensure that you get straight and not, um, meaning that they're, they're the same distance apart all the way down, they're even, um, because when you get a cylindrical shape and it's not even all the way down, then you, you know your dimensions are gonna be off even that much more, but these ones aren't too bad for these tea lights, so. So there's the top, and then I'm just going to trim the bottom and here along the uh, edge here so that it, we get a nice flush seam. All right, so that's looking pretty. All right, so let me go ahead and trim that. Just do a little bit at a time. And then we'll eventually meet up on the end there. And like I said, it's still nice and pliable and you still have time to work with this, so. But it will dry and cure to a hardened state in a couple of days, so. All right. I'm just gonna continue working with this and making sure that it's nice and glued well to the glass and trimming it up a little bit more. And then once I'm done with everything, then I'll show you the finished tea lights. Okay guys, here are my alcohol ink and resin wrapped candle holders that are finally finished. And I think they turned out really, really well. They're super pretty. And I'm just gonna flip one around here so you can see uh, the seam and how that was adjoined. Everything's nicely glued together and I think they look great. I decided to opt for the battery operated tea lights in this case and in all honesty, it's probably better suited for this application. And then your safety is covered. You don't have to worry about leaving your candles unattended. And these, of course, would look great on anybody's dinner table with the lights turned down low. And of course, they would make great gifts. So thanks so much for watching today, guys. If you enjoyed this video and found value, then please give it a thumbs up, a like, and share. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for weekly art videos. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys again real soon.